The market for planar magnetic IEMs has been growing, um, especially a lot recently, and I haven't been honestly been very excited at all with most of the releases until now. With the base and the base and AS1, it's it's a weird name, but let's talk about it. <laughs> Now, of course, I gotta get some disclaimers out the way. Um, this was sent to me for review, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Everything you're gonna hear here is my own opinion. As always, I always feel like I have to do this part because YouTube land, there's a lot of people who like who will get stuff and say whatever they want just to keep any more stuff. Me, I like to give an honest opinion, but I feel like none of y'all believe me. I don't even ever have like the little sponsored thing ever, at least not yet, because I, I guess I'm too small for that. But even then, I'd still give my honest opinion. Anyway, this review will be more gaming focused, but I will still I'll touch on like audio file aspects because that's important to how it affects its performance in games. So, you know, with that being said, let's get started. Starting with the box, we're apparently going to get some pretty decently sized planar magnetic drivers, which they're going to use to apparently give us more base. But anyway, inside this box, we're going to find a really nice metal carrying case box. But, you know, with that aside, we're going to get the IMs, of course, and of course that metal box. But in this metal carrying case, we'll find a few things such as a high quality copper cable, a quarter inch adapter, as well as a cleaner for like your grill in case it gets dirty with earwax. On the other side is another cable, which has an inline microphone in case you're into that. And you also get a bag just full of different types of ear tips, including like regular silicone tips, flange tips, and foam tips. And interestingly, there's also this little plastic piece which is used to remove your uh, cable in case you're not very confident with using your hands, which there's also instructions for. All right, now starting with the fancier cable, it's pretty well built with a very nice braiding that's thick, durable, and flexible. It's got a straight 3.5 millimeter jack, a metal splitter and chin slider, with the cable exiting into twist braids after the split, and at the end are MMCX connectors on ear hooks. Now as for the inline mic cable, it's still very well built with a very tight braiding, which I actually kind of like a little bit more. As well, it's not as thick, it's still durable and flexible, though a bit stiffer than the other cable. Considering it's more mobile use, it has an angled 3.5 millimeter jack, which is good for phones and laptops, so that's good. Moving up, you get a metal splitter, as well as a plastic chin slider, and this cable also splits into very tight twist braids. Though, of course, on one side, you will have the inline microphone, which is a three-button inline mic, so you're gonna have, like, controls for volume up, down, and, you know, pause and play, as well as, like, hanging up your phone. The cable then, of course, ends in ear hooks with MM6 connectors. Now, as for the IMs themselves, they look nice with a nice-looking build, though the feel of them is very light, so they sometimes feel a little bit cheap due to the light plastic resin body, which is all transparent other than the faceplate. But this is actually pretty neat because we do get a good look at the planar magnetic drivers on the inside. Now, on top are MM6 connectors, and if we take off the ear tip, we'll find that the nozzle is made of plastic with a metal grill. Alright, now for a little curious about how these things are gonna sound, well, you know, here's the microphone test. It's an inline microphone, and it, it'll do. It's not the craziest sound in the world, but it's still passable. You can understand me just fine. And while I'm at it, you know, might as well talk about how the thing fits and feels and looks on my head. And so if you're, you know, fashion conscious, well, here's how they look. They aren't necessarily the biggest. They're about, like, average size, medium kind of size IEMs. They don't stick out all too much, but they do stick out just a bit, but it's not like terribly. Um, Comfort-wise, due to their very light weight, they're very comfortable in the ears as long as you have a really good fit, depending on what ear tip you use. So mind you, your fit and comfort will vary from person to person, depending on the size and shape of your ears. But um, if you find the right shape, I th or you know the right size of ear tips, and they come with a whole bunch of different ear tips, then I think you should be fine. For most of the people out there, I think you will be okay with these ear tips. Unless like, you know, or, you know, these earbud size in your side of your ear. And the only people I'd imagine having trouble with these are those with very, very small ears. So, you know, there you go. All right, now let's get into the sound of these guys. And this is where um, these things kind of like are interesting to me. So these are planar magnetic IEMs. And in the last few that I've tested, they kind of struggled here and there. And there are the same things I've noticed um, in those struggles with like, you know, the mids and highs, which I'll get into a bit later. But something I did greatly notice from these, which these things also market, is that the bass is pretty incredible. And this is probably the first time that I'm actually properly experiencing like planar bass on IEMs. Now, for some context, planar bass isn't very, like, um, it's not the strongest thing in the world, but instead of being strong, it is very dynamic, and it's just very clean and textured, and that's what these things do very well. So, I guess, with starting with the sound, at the low end, the bass on these guys is, is pretty strong. I wouldn't say these are bass cannons, but these have a lot of bass, particularly at the low end, which these things have a really good reach into those lower sub bass regions, giving a whole lot of rumble to the sound, a lot of oomph in um, the sound of the bass here. The mid bass and upper bass isn't quite as strong. The impact and punchiness is just decent. It is um, still like 
you know, very, very good in terms of his punch, but it's not like as strong as the Rumble. But together, the whole base isn't like um, very super mega hard impacting like someone would expect from like more dynamic drivers. Because these are planar drivers, the way the base is presented is very dynamic and it is a very interesting base. So then when you're listening to songs with bass, you're going to hear a lot from the bass, like details in the bass, you might say. Whereas on other more dynamic IEMs, you're going to hear more um, bass feel and impact. So that's the thing about planar bass. It's very dynamic. There's lots to it where it would reveal a lot into the sound, which I greatly enjoyed on these. And this is the first time I've heard it so well done on, um, you know, planar magnetic IEMs in particular. So it's a pretty good job right here. Now then moving on, while the sound is very bass heavy, I wouldn't say that these like greatly overloaded everything else. Granted, the bass did call to my attention the most, but um, it didn't cause the mids to be too recessed. I do think they kind of boosted the mids to make up for the fact that they boosted the bass a lot. So we still get some mid presence and clarity, like a whole lot of clarity in this, just because, you know, it is planar. Though, um, while we get a lot of details in the mids, the bass sometimes tries to play over it just because of how strong it is but I'm at least able to like pick out the sound due to the really good sound separation and so that's really good but the thing I did notice about the mids and the highs to be um, honest is that with all the details and clarity there is a lot of texture to it you might say so it is by no means smooth or um, natural there's something uh, unnatural about it where it gives you a little maybe too much of that texture, almost like a grainy feel when you're hearing it at times. And at other times when it gets really strong, it can come off as harsh, particularly in the higher range. So, you know, the mids and the highs, they're pretty okay, but they are intense and they're not necessarily, you know, smooth and, you know, all together as a package, um, what you get is a very exciting, intense sound with a lot of detail. So, you know, honestly, I do like the sound of these guys, but, you know, there are a few times when I felt that that detail got it was just a bit much if that makes sense just lacks the smoothness that I personally prefer because for me I like a more smoother sound and these are not quite that but if you really like that texture and that extra like clarity and details in the sound then you might like it however I do think that at times you know like I mentioned it came off unnatural in some sense so it wasn't the cleanest mids I've ever heard in the world while being very detailed I feel like there could be a little bit more cleanliness in it but that could be just me and my preferences. Now to continue a little further with the highs, they do have a pretty good range and go up pretty high and they do roll off pretty high up just to prevent um, some harshness and sibilance. It never really got sibilance on these, but it did get harsh at times with certain sounds and certain ranges. But for the most part, it was kind of like the mids, in which case it was like just very detailed and had a lot of clarity to it. And at times it would just get harsh if it just went too hard or too high, you know? But you know, overall, package this all together with the entire sound range. It's a very exciting, very engaging sound that I'm like typically not used to, especially from a planar magnetic like driver set from a set of IEMs. I'm used to like more dynamic stuff like on these, um, the sound, the Hartfield Acoustic Deers. These were like my current very intense set. And honestly, with the way that the bass and the sound is presented on these, I'm probably not going to use these as much if I want more intense sound. And I'll be using the, you know, the, the bass and AS ones or bass and AS ones. But you know, that's just the sound range from here. Let's get a little bit more also into like the the sound stage and imaging and sound separation. Starting with the sound stage, it is very wide. It is, um, it's a, it's a large sound stage that is definitely more on the wide side versus depth or height like the depth is not the greatest it was just maybe a bullet below average i'd say but the width was pretty great and the height was just yeah it's just meh which is kind of common with IEMs, honestly. The utilization of the stage with sound separation was pretty decent. I was able to like, you know, home in on different sounds, which was good. Though at times it did feel a little bit jumbled in, probably because of how powerful the bass is and how much it wants to present itself. But still, even with its presentation being fairly strong, I'm able to like filter that out. Overall, that's pretty good. Now, if we go into imaging well, along with this, I'd say it's about average or just, yeah, I'd say it's about average. It's not the greatest level of precision in the world, but I'd say it was pretty good honestly though that's in the context of music in the context of games particularly competitive shooters then I, it was it was okay because of the sound stage being very wide not having the most depth then you know looking for people from a 360 degree angle these things were generally accurate but weren't accurate enough to the point where I'd say these things would ever excel in competitive shooter games like yes I'll generally be able to find where people generally are and that's okay but if I really want to be like really sweaty and play ranked I wouldn't use these but even then if I 
I was like forced to use these, I'd say I'd still have a pretty fun, okay time because they still give you a very engaging experience and it, it was fun. Though there are some drawbacks to the sound tuning because while the mids and the highs did very well to give you a lot of detail, the amount of bass you get when there's a lot of low notes going on, like when there's a lot of explosions, kind of drowns out some of those sounds you're looking for. Which is while more engaging, exciting, and immersive, it's not very helpful if you're going to be playing very competitively where you just want to listen to win, you know? Now with all that being said, one can easily expect these to be very good for non-competitive games, more open world games, in which case, yes, they are absolutely wonderful for those kind of games because it gave you such a great sense of size in the world and presentation of sound. The bass made things very exciting, the mids made everything exciting, the overall presentation was very exciting, you got all the details and whatnot, and that graininess that I was mentioning earlier that it wasn't a big fan of in like music, I was very much enjoying when playing games because it just felt like far more immersive, so when it comes to like, you know, look more immersion or whatnot, I think these things do a great job and I really had a great time. Originally, when it came to more intense engaging sound, I I would reach for the Hardfield Acoustic Deer because these things were just pure intensity for just all around. But at times it would kind of, you know, the bass would get a little bit muddy and it would bleed into the mids a bit. So, you know, there, there were those issues. But with these, with, with the planar magnetic drivers, I got a lot of more, I got a lot more like, you know, dynamics in the bass. A lot more of the, just details in the bass and it was just very nice. There were sounds I wasn't hearing before in sounds and sounds I wasn't quite experiencing as much um, on other sets than when I um, experienced some on these. Just because of like how revealing planar magnetics can be within like the lower ranges and then playing with the mids and the highs it just made a very just just very engaging sound. Really great for like non-competitive games and more open world games. Absolutely wonderful. And once again for like you know more competitive games I wouldn't say they were trash for it, I wouldn't recommend them if you're trying to be a, like a sweaty tryhard, but if you're just there to play for fun and have a good time and just have a really fun engaging experience with the friends or just by yourself, then you know, go ahead. But if you really are going to go into competitive mode, you're really going to go ranked, I would use something else. These things are for enjoyment, you know? Now the price of these run around like around the 100, 60, 70, 80 range depending on where you're finding and if there's sales or not, and they're conveniently priced very similar to the Hardfield Acoustic Deers. And there are ups and downs to them. Sound wise, I prefer how revealing the sound is with like the planar magnetic drivers within the base AS, you know, base and AS1s, complicated name, compared to like the Hartfield Acoustic Deer, very weird name, which are, while very intense and very fun, I do think sometimes the intensity takes away from like the details and the sound a bit. Though, you know, still at the end of the day, I do think these are very fun and I prefer the build on these much more because of the very solid metal build. While this build is very light, very comfortable due to the lightweight plastic, I don't know if I have the most confidence in it. They did say it's made of, made of like a lightweight resin, but resin is just another fancy word for plastic. So um, when it comes to durability, only time will tell. But I think they're going to be fine overall, considering the price range that they're at. I would expect the build to be pretty good, though I think I would prefer, I, you know, I would have preferred a build that's more similar to, say, like a full resin, like casting kind of shell looking thing, like on the Blessings too. Like if they managed to do that with this same sound, I think it would be really, really nice. But with that being said, I still high rec highly recommend these guys at the price they're at. I think they do a great job. And I've had all the planar magnetic driver like IEMs out there. These are the basiest ones I've heard and these are the funnest ones I've heard whether I'm using them for music or using them for games. So you know that being said that's pretty much I for today. If you do want to buy them I'll have a leave like, you know, a little link in the description and you know, just be able to give me a kickback I think if you buy from there. And uh, yeah with that being said I, could, uh, I don't want to do like and subscribe but you know if you like it you can subscribe if you like much stuff and content but it's just so wordy. I'm I don't like advertising myself, but everyone tells me to do it. But, you know, maybe I'll stop doing that. So with that being said, this thing's getting too long. So I'll see you guys next time.